Hi, this is Dr. Johnny Bowden, and thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to have a special presentation brought to you by Clark's Nutrition and Barleen's Essential Oils on healthy oils and the many benefits of using them. Now, whenever I talk to people about oils and fats, I notice that there's a ton of confusion out there. People think there are bad fats like saturated fat and trans fats. It's only partially true. Saturated fats are really not all that bad for you, but trans fats really are. Um, and there's a lot of confusion about the oils. There's omega-6s and omega-3s and omega-9s, and what do they do, and, and which ones are good, and how do we balance them? So we're going to get into all of that today a little bit, and we're going to start by explaining what the difference is between an omega-6 and an omega-3. We talk those terms a lot, we use them around, we see them on bottles, but really, what are they? Well, omega-6s and omega-3s are just ways of describing the architecture of fatty acids. And what are fatty acids? They're the little things that make up fat. Just like uh, glucose makes up carbohydrates and amino acids make up protein, fatty acids make up fat. So anything that has fat in it, whether it be butter or oil or avocado, what it really is is just chains of these little fatty acids. And a couple of them are essential for human health. By essential, I simply mean they cannot be made by the body. They have to be gotten from the diet. And there are only two like that. There's an omega-6 called linolenic acid, and there's an omega-3 called alpha-linolenic acid. Now, the story doesn't end there, because although these are essential for the diet, out of those raw materials, our body makes other omega-3s, which are very, very important. They sometimes get called essential. They're not technically essential because your body can make them, but you need them, and you need them very badly for your brain, for your circulation, for your heart, for your mood, for all kinds of important things like that. So those other two omega-3s are called EPA and DHA. And yes, our body can make them, but it doesn't do a great job of it. So it's really, really beneficial when we can take those omega-3s in preformed ways from a supplement so that we don't have to worry about our body being able to make it. Now, the story gets a little more complex here. The omega-6s, which are found in just about every baked good you can find, every refined oil on the market, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, uh, uh, safflower oil, canola oil, these are all loaded with omega-6s. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the omega-6s are the building blocks of inflammatory compounds in the body. The omega-3s are the building blocks of anti-inflammatory compounds in the body. Now, you might say, what do we need to have building blocks for inflammatory compounds? We don't want inflammation. Inflammation's bad, right? Well, only partly. When you stub your toe, when you have an injury, your body's response to that involves inflammation. It's part of the healing process. When uh, liquid and, and blood and, and fluid flows to the area of injury, that's white blood cells surrounding that, that source of in potential infection and surrounding any pathogens that might get in there. And it's an attempt to really control any possible invasion from antigens that don't belong into the body. So that kind of inflammatory response is important. You don't want that to be zero. However, we've got these two armies, inflammatory, anti-inflammatory. In our Paleolithic diet, in the diet that's most natural to us and most healthy, that's found in hunter-gatherer societies everywhere, that balance is about one to one. In the American diet, that balance is about 20 to one in favor of omega-6s. So we are, if you would think of it this way, we're funding the inflammatory army to the tune of you know, billions of dollars, and we're starving the anti-inflammatory army, which is made up of omega-3s, because we just don't get enough of them in the diet. So, the balance between omega-6s and omega-3s is incredibly important for human health. It has ramifications in every disease from Alzheimer's to cancer to obesity to diabetes, even to some of the non-life-threatening ones like asthma. There's always an inflammatory versus anti-inflammatory component. And when we talk about supplementing with important oils like omega-3s, like the Barleen's uh, fish oil or the omega swirls, all of which I'm going to talk about in a minute, we are trying to correct that balance in our diet. And that balance is essential for human health. We just have to have those omega-3s in the right balance with the omega-6s. So we really need to consume a little less of all those vegetable oils and all those processed foods which are so loaded with omega-6s and a little bit more of the omega-3s that we really don't get enough of from our diet. So what's the best way to get omega-3s into the body? Well, there are actually three of them. Remember I told you a little bit earlier, one of them is essential. That's alpha-linolenic acid. That's only found in plant foods, like flaxseed, 
Uh, there's a couple of others, but flaxseed is the best source of alpha linolenic acid. And people who eat a lot of flaxseed or who take flaxseed oil are going to get a lot of alpha linolenic acid in their, in their systems. Now, it's not the only omega-3. Remember, there are two others that the body will make from that alpha linolenic acid that's found in flaxseed. But it converts about maybe 10% to those other two omega-3s that are found in fish oil. So if you're a vegetarian and you can't take fish oil or you can't stand the taste of it or you want to use a plant-based source, flaxseed oil is the way to go, but you've got to take a lot of it. You've got to take a, a fair amount of it so that you will get the conversion into the other two omega-3s that your body and your brain and your heart need. What's the right amount of flaxseed oil to take? I recommend one tablespoon for every 100 pounds of body weight. If you take that much, you're going to get all the wonderful anti-inflammatory properties of the omega-3 that's in flaxseed oil, but you're also going to get enough of a conversion into those other two omega-3s, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, so that you won't have to worry and you'll be covered. So that's the way to take flaxseed oil, and there is, I can tell you unequivocally, there's no better flaxseed oil on the market than Barleen's. It is the, the premier product. It's organic. It's made in small batches. It's carefully controlled. It doesn't sit on a shelf at a big box store for a year and come, comes from China and you don't know what's in it or what contaminants. It's a very, very fine product made by a small, concerned family who's been doing this for three generations, and that's the way to get your flaxseed oil. You can also use Flax itself, and Barleen's makes a terrific product called Fortiflax, which is a staple in my kitchen. And the reason I like flax itself, Fortiflax, is because not only does it contain the omega-3 that's found in flaxseed, but it also contains compounds called lignans, which have been found in study after study after study to be very protective against a number of different cancers. And the flaxseed itself has fiber, so you get this triple whammy. You got the trifecta. You get fiber, you get the cancer-fighting lignans, and you get the omega-3. So I put Fortiflax on everything. Put it in shakes, put it on salads. It's just a great product. Now let's move on to those other two omega-3s that are not found in flax, the ones the body will make from the omega-3 that's found in flax. Now those two are called EPA and DHA. They are found only in animal products, mainly in cold water fish like salmon, which is why you know, the American Heart Association and all of the, even the conventional medical organizations now recommend eating fish at least twice a week, largely because of that omega-3 content, that EPA and DHA. But it's also found in grass-fed meat, uh, and there are a couple of other ways that you can get omega-3s uh, from, from animal sources, but the number one source really is fish, uh, cold water fish like salmon. Now, here's what these two omega-3s do. They have been found to lower blood pressure. They've been found to lower triglycerides, which is a very big risk factor for stroke and heart disease. They improve mood. They improve circulation. What happens with these omega-3s is that they get into the cell membrane and they make it fluid enough so that information can get in and out. So if you think about it from the point of view of mood, what do all the antidepressants do? They try to keep serotonin hanging around the brain longer, right? They're called SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So they're meant to keep serotonin around. That means you want that serotonin talking to the cells. You want that information getting in and out of the cells. So when the cells have incorporated lots of omega-3s, they have that really soft, pliable texture, and then information can get in and out very easily. The cells can communicate with one another. Memory, thinking, mood, all these things improve. And that's why omega-3s are so important for cellular health. So the two omega-3s that are found in fish, EPA and DHA, are very, very critical for so many different things in the human body, for circulation, for mood, for, uh, for healthy blood pressure, for healthy triglyceride levels. So if you're going to take the preformed EPA and DHA, there's no better way to get it than fish oil. Now, my preference as a fish oil product has been Barleen's for several years. I've been using them probably since my first book, The 150 Healthiest Foods on Earth, and I, I recommend them all the time and, and mention them in all of the books that I've written subsequently. And one of the reasons for that is, again, uh, your fish oil is only good as the source it comes from. You know, if you're gonna get your fish oil from fish that, I, I come from New York City, if you're gonna get your fish oil from fish that was 
you know, dragged out of the bottom of the Hudson River, it's only going to be as good as the source it was. You know, if that fish is contaminated, if it's inedible, if it's rancid, if it's got uh, contamination from heavy metals and, 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 and things like this, you know, the fish oil is not going to be any better for you than the source. So what Barleen's does is they use the most pristine sources. They test it every possible way you can imagine for every impurity. It's organic. It's made again in small batches. It's carefully controlled. And it's just a very high quality product. And people tell me all the time, they take fish oil and they burp it back and they, it repeats on them. This is not going to happen with Barleen's because the fish oil isn't rancid. Most of the time when, when stuff repeats on you and, it, and you burp it up, it's largely because it's rancid to begin with. And you can find this out very easily by simply breaking the little bit of, you know, opening a capsule and smelling it, seeing what it smells like, and it'll tell you right then. You can also put, here's another trick that nutritionists use a lot, you can also put the fish oil capsules in the freezer, and that'll be the end of the burping. So I love Barleen's because of the quality of the fish oil, but I also love it because of the potency. Now here's something not everybody realizes. If you go into one of the big box stores and you see one of these, you know, really inexpensive fish oils and says a thousand milligrams of fish oil, doesn't matter. Think of a prospector. Think of those old movies when the prospectors used to come uh, panning for gold and they'd get those little pans with all the sand and stuff like that and they'd kind of you know, shake it around and there'd be a few little gold nuggets they'd throw the rest away. Well, the gold nuggets are the things you care about, not the sand. In fish oil, what you care about is the EPA and the DHA. Those are the essential fatty acids. Those are the ones you're looking for. So it doesn't matter what the total milligrams of fish oil is. You dose on the EPA and DHA. You look on the label and you see how much EPA is there, how much DHA is there. That's what you care about, not the total. The total is just the sand. The gold nuggets are the EPA and DHA. Now in Barleen's, for example, in their high potency EPA DHA product, which is a pill form, it's about 360 milligrams of each of DHA and EPA. That's a wonderful dose. It's about 720 milligrams, almost a gram of fish oil, of the important kind of fish oil, the gold nugget kind of fish oil, in one dose. I do a double dose and it comes out great. So the high potency EPA DHA is my personal preference when I'm taking pills, which is when I'm on the road, for example, or sometimes when I don't feel like you know pouring the spoonfuls of the fish oil onto the tablet, I, then I, I will always use the high potency EPA DHA because that dosage is so great, 360 and 360. Uh, of EPA and DHA in one serving. Um, but my actual personal preference, it may not be yours, is to actually use the oil itself. And the Barleen's fish oil is really one of the better tasting ones, and I've tasted some that are maybe not so good. But this is a very, very clean tasting, lemony uh, fish oil. It's not offensive in any way. It, it, you know, even people who don't like the taste of fish oil or the idea of fish oil have found that the Barleen's brand is really an extraordinarily easy way to get these important fatty acids into the diet. But if you still can't stand the idea of the taste of fish oil, or if you have kids who will no more go near a, a, a thing of fish oil, if you told them it's fish oil, they'll run the other way, there is a solution. And it's called the Omega Swirls. And I got to tell you that this is one of the most innovative and amazing products I have seen in 20 years of being in the health uh, field as a nutritionist, as a personal trainer, as a weight loss coach, and I've seen an awful lot of things come and go, but the Omega Swirls, which have, by the way, won every single consumer award given by the entire industry. You know, the natural products field is all kinds of different awards, different magazines give their best of the best. It's won it in every category, and here's why. The Omega Swirls are fish oil in a kind of fruit, suspended in a kind of fruit particleized uh, consistency that is unbelievably good tasting, does not remind anybody of fish oil. In fact, we, I, I'll let you in on a little secret. We were going to do a demonstration once where we took the pina colada um, omega swirl and actually put it on frozen yogurt and gave it to people and asked them what they think of this topping. And we tried a couple of pilots doing that stuff and people said, we like this topping, where do you get it? Nobody. Nobody suspected that this had anything to do with health. They thought it was just a pina colada topping. And, and the omega swirls come in pina colada. They come in, my favorite is mango peach. Um, there's a couple of other flavors, but they are just remarkable. And there was a study done. They did a clinical pilot study on this in terms of its absorbability. Because you figured, okay, it tastes that good. It can't possibly be as good for you as regular fish oil. And what they found out is that the nature of the suspension, the way they actually prepare this with the particles being suspended, actually produces even more absorption than regular fish oil, certainly as good. So you don't lose anything in terms of 
availability or absorption when you use the swirls, and you will be able to get any kid in your family to take it. I have seen this happen in my own family. I've, I've, I've got dozens of letters on my website every time we feature the Omega Swirls on special. People buy them, and I, there's never a time that I don't get letters from, from parents saying, my God, my kid will eat this stuff. And listen, if you don't think that you're doing your kid the greatest favor in the world by giving them fish oil or by omega-3s in general, let me just tell you that low levels of omega-3 have been associated with every behavioral disturbance you can imagine, with ADD, with uh, hyperactivity, with um, uh, acting out behavior, so with, with lower levels of intelligence, visual acuity. So high levels of omega-3 in your kid's body is setting them up for just about every advantage you can imagine, from behavioral to attention to, uh, to calmness to mood, and, and of course what it's doing for their bodies. So getting them to take that fish oil or that uh, flaxseed oil in a form that they will actually eat is a very, very important contribution to their health, and omega swirls will do that. That is an absolute guarantee. Now, while I'm here, I want to just mention a couple of the other Barleen's products, one of which is the olive leaf uh, complex. Now, I actually wrote a little booklet on the olive leaf complex and all the wonderful things that it does. It's a wonderful immune system booster. And you know, there is, I'm going to let you in on a little controversy behind the scenes in the health food industry. We, uh, we have talked about olive oil. You've, everybody's heard about olive oil and how healthy it is. It's part of the Mediterranean diet. It's heart healthy. You know, they have less rates of heart disease because they eat so much olive oil. We actually, there's a small but vocal minority of us who believe that it's not so much the olive oil that makes it so great. If the olive oils are simply a means of delivering something called polyphenols that are found in the olive plant. So the oil gets all the uh, press as being so healthy and wonderful, but really what's sneaking in there in the oil are all these almost magical compounds that are found in the fresh olive tree that are called polyphenols, and they are very antiviral, antimicrobial. They've been found to be effective against a whole host of different bacteria and viruses, and it's these polyphenols that are really, really the important part of the olive oil. Well, you can get those polyphenols without having the oil. First of all, you save about 120 calories per spoonful. Second of all, you're not always going to be walking around with olive oil that you want to consume like that. But the olive leaf complex, one spoonful a day, is just the most wonderful uh, kind of tonic for the immune system. And I, I take it all during flu season and in the winter. I almost never get sick, and if I do, it's a very short-lived sickness. It goes by really quickly, and everybody's wondering how come I'm back to work so fast. So I recommend that olive leaf uh, complex very, very strongly. And the thing about the complex is that they actually takes uh, the entire rich penelope of uh, polyphenols, the entire richness of, the the, 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 of all of them that are found in there, and puts it into one very uh, tasty little capsule that you can take on a daily basis. Highly, highly recommended. And the last product I want to mention, since we're talking about good oils and bad oils, and saturated fat, I started out by saying, gets such a bad rap and probably undeserved. I think that's going to change over the next couple of decades when we realize that you know, we need some saturated fat and all saturated fat isn't bad. Well, that brings us to another one of the Barleen's products that I use on a daily basis, and that's the extra virgin coconut oil. Now, coconut oil used to be thought of as a very terrible fat because it's got saturated fat, but the fact is that the type of saturated fat that's found in coconut oil is something called MCTs, medium chain triglycerides. Now, these types of fats, the body tends to use as energy rather than as storage. It tends to not go to your hips. It tends to be used the same way carbohydrates are for burning up and for energy. The fatty acids, and remember we talked about fatty acids, those are the little components of fats, those are the little things that get chained together to make any fat in the universe, whether it's in your body or in your diet. Fatty acids that are found in coconut oil have been found to be antiviral, antimicrobial, there's caprylic acid, which is very effective against yeast and candida, um, there's lauric acid, which is a very big tonic for the immune system, very effective against a whole host of microbes. Though coconut oil also imparts this really kind of uh, edgy little taste to things, I usually mix it um, maybe with some butter, and I use it for scrambling eggs. I use it for uh, stir-frying vegetables. It, it, it imparts a lovely taste. It stands up very well to heat and it is not a bad fat. Don't let anybody tell you that the saturated fat in coconut oil is bad for you. In fact, uh, just a little aside, um, 
the MCTs in coconut oil, the type of fat that's used in, in coconut oil, is a mainstay of pediatric epilepsy programs. And they put these kids on very high fat diets because it controls their epilepsy, and most of the fat that they use is the same kind of fat that's found in coconut oil. So if there were any health problems with that, they wouldn't be feeding it to kids for two years at a time. And they find almost no complications or, or problems with that whatsoever. The Puka Puka, who are the uh, uh, tribe in the Tropian Islanders, were studied back in the 70s, they got about 80% of their calories from coconut and coconut fat and coconut oil. They, they couldn't even measure the heart disease on these Trobriand Islanders. It was that low. So there's nothing in coconut oil that's going to cause you any problems. It's only going to do good. It's a great cooking oil, uh, and I recommend it to be used on a daily basis. So that's basically the story of healthy oils. You don't have to fear saturated fat so much. You should stay completely away from trans fats. You should lower your uh, intake of omega-6s, particularly from those highly processed vegetable oils that are refined within an inch of their life and have nothing of any value left except tons of omega-6s, which upsets your balance between your inflammatory and anti-inflammatory armies, and you should supplement with omega-3s. And you can do that either with flaxseed oil, you can do it with fish oil, you can do it with the omega swirls, which have both a flaxseed and a fish oil version of them. And these are the best and most protective ways to make sure that your inflammation and anti-inflammation armies are equally well-funded and that you get all the amazing benefits of this kind of oil change. This has been Dr. Johnny Bowden for Barleen's and for Clark's Nutrition. Thank you so much.